Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wukash Chuch, and this is the EIT Food Innovation Prizes Competition 2020. It's one of the largest free food startup competitions in Southern and in Europe. We award prizes to entrepreneurs and early stage startups developing innovative products and services with the potential to transform our food systems. This month, we are running online finals in 17 countries in Southern and Eastern Europe, and we are awarding prizes to the most innovative and ambitious agri-food startups. I hope you'll enjoy watching this year's eighth country final, and today we're in Slovakia. As we all know, the last few months have all been about coronavirus, COVID-19, and the pandemic in every news broadcast worldwide. Even though these words have been repeated millions of times, we still know very little, it turns out, about the virus itself. It is believed to have started in a, at a food market in China, and it, it has seriously impacted the food systems all around the world since. Over the past three months, millions of people were pushed to rely on food banks and countless services were disrupted, not to mention its unprecedented economic impact on industries, businesses and institutions all over the world. It's almost fair to say that never in the history of mankind has something so small destabilized so much in such a short period of time. But we have also witnessed some good things. Uh, people returning to cooking more, planting their own fruits and vegetables, shopping more locally and supporting local farmers and food producers. It's a very important wake-up call, an opportunity that can all too easily be wasted to try food systems towards much healthier, safer and much more sustainable long-term solutions. This is why the world needs bright, fast-paced startups to make a difference. The startups you will see pitching today dedicate themselves day in, day out to bringing that transformation about. 2020 has not exactly been an easy year for anyone, including startup, startups and businesses in general. EIT Food decided to move its Innovation Prizes competition online and to the summer season so that startups could rely on critical funding as and when they need it most. Today, in the Slovakia final, we will meet eight ambitious startups in early stage uh, of their development. And to kick off today's country final, we'd like to welcome to our virtual stage representative of the EIT Food Hub in Slovakia, Adriana Kolesarova from Slovak University of Agriculture in Nitra. Adriana is uh, one of the organizers of this final, and she will tell us more about how the University of Agriculture in Nitra works together with EIT Food. Hello, Adriana. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you? I can Thank see you. a big smile there. It's Thank always you a good so start. Much. Thank you. Adriana, Thank you very our, much. Our, our virtual stage is yours. Okay. Hello. Hi, Lucas. Thank you very much for welcoming me here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Adriana Kolesarova and I am representing EIT Food Hub in Slovakia, Slovak University of Agriculture Nitra, Faculty of Biotechnology and Food Sciences. EIT Food Hub in Slovakia was created at the Slovak University of Agriculture Nitra in 2019 and uh, it belonged to Collocation Center Warsaw, Poland. European Union initiated bringing together the three sides of the knowledge triangle, business, companies and small and medium sized enterprises, education institutions, research centers and innovation community, cities, regions and no government organization. This sad attribute of the successful application to become EIT Food Hub in Slovakia was significant cooperation with the agri-food sector in transferring science and research results into practice and intensive cooperation with government organization in developing the common agriculture policy. In Slovakia, we have a knowledge triangle through our national platform Agrobiofood Nitra established between Slovak University of Agriculture Nitra National Agriculture and Food Center and Bioeconomic Cluster approved by the Minister of Education, Science, Research and Sport of the Slovak Republic on July 28, 2016 as a professional 
partner for research and development in biotechnology as well as of official representative of the Slovak Republic in relation to European and international and programs. In 2019, we have in Slovakia organized a lot of workshop, a lot of uh, workshop for students a lot of competition for startups. The additional activity focus on current issue of food practice, networking of food system research, innovation, and transfer of knowledge into practice. Dear finalists, on behalf of EIT Food in Slovakia, I wish you successful day and presentation and good luck and a very nice, friendly atmosphere. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adriana. I hope you'll be staying with us throughout as we venture into the future of food during today's competition. Well, I noticed during the rehearsal that uh, some of our competitors are quite stressed. It's an altogether new experience to be answering questions in front of the camera. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Adriana Kolesarova welcoming us from the Slovak University of Agriculture in Nitra. From what I've heard, it might just be one of the youngest universities on the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, we also have Julia Bodnar from EIT Food joining us today. Julia will tell you more about EI Food and its support for agri-food startups. Hello, Julia. Good afternoon. Hi, Lukas. Good afternoon. Can you hear me well? I can hear you really well. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for welcoming me to our virtual stage. I'm very happy to be here on behalf of EAT Food. And uh, before we kick off the pitches, tell you in a couple of words what we do, uh, why and how EAT Food supports uh, agri-food entrepreneurs. Uh, so again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hello and welcome to our online final in Slovakia. Uh, my name is Julia Bodnar, I work for EAT Food, and our mission is to transform Europe's food system, make it more sustainable, trusted and healthier, both for people's health and for our environment um, as well. For those of you who have never heard about us, just a couple of words. Uh, EAT Food is basically an initiative that was started by the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, EAT. Uh, we do lots of lots of different things and activities, but probably the easiest way to think about EAT Food is a network of key players in the food system. Uh, we're working with big food companies such as Nestle, PepsiCo, Muspex, Valio, uh, VTT, leading universities, University of Cambridge, Technion, University of Helsinki, uh, research organizations, uh, startups, to bring about a transformation in the food system. And uh, as Vukas mentioned before, we do need this transformation more than ever. Uh, in the last couple of months, we all saw how important our food system is, and uh, how fragile it also is, how many challenges it faces. Uh, besides all the pandemics and rapid climate change, we still waste a lot of food. Actually, the third of all the food that we produce, we waste. Uh, the obesity is on the rise. And at the same time, in other parts of the world, uh, we have people suffering from malnutrition and under eating. So you really don't have to look too far to see uh, so many problems that our food system faces, and they need to be solved now. And uh, at EAT Food, we really believe that startups can be a key part of this transformation. So uh, while we do many activities in education, public engagement and innovation, entrepreneurship is one of the key areas that we focus on. And uh, we do try to help startups at any and every stage of their development. Uh, whether you've got an idea, a young business, or a more mature company, a scale-up, we've got different programs to help you grow. And uh, as you can see, Innovation Prizes competition is actually in our launch uh, vertical, so it's one of the programs for early-stage startups. And uh, uh, as Vukash will also tell you later, uh, in this program we uh, organize finals in 17 different countries in Southern and Eastern Europe. Uh, right now, because of the pandemics, we're doing it online. We're experimenting with this format and uh, it has been going pretty well for us so far. Uh, and uh, in each country, we shortlisted eight startups to compete for three main cash prizes, 
5,000 euros, 3,000 euros, and 1,000 euro. Uh, and there's also an additional audience price of 2,000 euros because the uh, final is being broadcasted live. So the audience also has a chance to vote for their favorite startup. Uh, the startups that we support in this competition, they're quite early stage, as I mentioned. So our goal here is to provide them with training, mentoring, and cash prizes so they can successfully grow. And to quickly mention a couple of other programs that might be interesting for uh, startups or maybe some viewers joining us today. Uh, for the early stage startups and entrepreneurs, we also have a program called Seedbed. Uh, in this program, we give you the money, the skills, the contacts to go out and validate your business model. We push you to reach out to your potential customers, talk to at least 100 of them, and use this feedback to strengthen your business proposal to figure out your market solution and plan your next steps. Uh, then for the medium stage companies, we have a program called Food Accelerator Network, in short, FAN. And um, this program is for ambitious entrepreneurs who've got some traction on the market, so who have been on the market for some time, but are looking to develop new skills, get access to investors, media, new customers and also work and learn from the best mentors and uh, even the partners in our network. Uh, this program has been called actually a mini MBA and it's a really fantastic opportunity for any agri-food startups. And finally, uh, last but not the least for sure, we've got a program called Rising Food Stars. This is our network of 50 plus high impact scale-ups, so more mature companies who are looking to expand to different markets and scale up further. Uh, these scale ups are getting partnered with some of the biggest food companies in the world, uh, Danone, Valio, John Deere, and they are doing innovation projects together. Uh, we've got lots and lots of different opportunities, really. I cannot uh, tell you all about them, uh, about all of them, because really I don't want to take too much time from our virtual stage, from the startups but you're very welcome to uh, visit our website, get in touch with us directly. Uh, you can find uh, the emails and uh, LinkedIn on, of my colleagues uh, on the webpage. Uh, our job is really to help as many innovative food entrepreneurs as possible. So if that's you, do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, on this note, I'd like to thank you for your attention, uh, for everybody joining our online final today in Slovakia and wish good luck to all the startups competing today. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was Yulia Bodnar of EIT Food. Well, what can I say? I wish five years ago, someone gave me all the money, all the skills and all the contacts, as Yulia mentioned, the programs of the EAT initiative are supporting entrepreneurs. Yulia has mentioned all that, but let's just do do a quick recap. The first prize today is 5,000 euro, second prize is 3,000 euro, third prize is 1,000 euro. These prizes will go to the teams who, in our jury's opinion, have the most innovative and impactful solutions for our food system. Moreover, the winner of the first prize will be invited to the grand final in Otto. The finalists from all 17 countries will compete for prizes up to 25,000 euros. Apart from that, all first prize winners will get access to top quality training before the grand final. Last but not least, we'll also be awarding the audience prize during today's final. Needless to say, perhaps our audience plays a key role in the competition during the jury deliberations and our keynote speech. Each audience member will have one vote to say which startup they thought has the biggest potential to transform the food system need better for people's health, and natural environment. The startup wins the hearts and minds of our audience today will also get 2,000 euros. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our today's jury. We have Milan, Daniel, and Jan joining us today. Hello, gentlemen, can you hear me well? Can you unmute for a while? So that hello, we can hello. Make sure oh, hello. Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, I'm sure you will be asking our eight competitors really tough questions today, gentlemen. So let us start with me asking you a tough one to begin with, shall we? 
Milan Daniel Jan, what makes you qualified to pass a fair judgment at the end of the day for the winner of our today's competition? In other words, please say a few words about yourselves. Can we start with Milan? Oh, hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk something about me. Uh, I'm head of National Business Center in Nitra and I'm representing Slovak Business Agency. This agency was established in 1993. Uh, it's approximately 30 years and we are supporting uh, small and medium enterprises uh, a lot of years. The original name of the agency was also the national agency of support of small and medium enterprises as well. And uh, we are also oriented on uh, startup programs, a lot of uh, other programs for support uh, new companies, new ideas, and also for old companies you need some, some help in the field of uh, education, in the field of uh, uh, legislation, finance program, etc., etc. Uh, I'm so very happy and I'm pleased to be here today. And I hope that uh, everything will be fine and we'll, we find with our colleagues in our jury to uh, the best, the winner. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's not too easy or a little uneasy to find it, but I hope that all of the information of our uh, members, and all of competitors, will be fine and will be uh, very very easy or very fluent to find some of the best of the best. Uh, I think it's very important to find some innovation and uh, European impact. I think this is the best in this time with uh, have a lot of problems uh, in, in EU economy in the field with uh, Corona uh, crisis, etc., etc. Okay, that's for me. I think that well, Thank you very much, Milan. It sounds, sounds like a lot of practical experience. Thank you very much. Can we proceed to Daniel? Yes, of course. Uh, you know what qualifies me? I was born in Nitra. I studied at the university. I was even at the management for, for some time. And, and we have a very long-term long uh, relationship and cooperation uh, with the university. Uh, I'm representing bioeconomic cluster. So it means I'm networking uh, companies with universities, research centers, as well as policymakers. It's not always easy, but that's what we try. So uh, also, we were bioeconomic cluster was at the beginning of uh, of EIT hub uh, or submission of proposal of the Slovak University of Agriculture. We were supporting them, so so we are in really close touch, and we have several several uh, international and national projects that we work with together. Uh, Bioeconomic Cluster is not interested only to, to this award uh, session, but we are also looking at individual companies or startups because we are doing similar things. Uh, for example, we are now applying for Horizon 2020 Innosu projects, which actually has a, quite a lot of funding available for small and medium companies, uh, especially innovative, sometimes sm uh, startups, sometimes uh, already existing. So we are looking at uh, not only those who will win, but maybe a good idea to work for the future as well. So uh, we are learning in Brussels. We are in some working groups uh, within the Standing Committee for Agriculture Research. We are helping other ministries to set up policies. We were one of the drafting bioeconomy strategy for Slovakia. Uh, but ma mainly we are working in the field with the companies and, and uh, linking them with uh, each other. Sometimes it's important cross-sectorally, but also with academia and research. So we do a lot of things and I'm very eager to listen their uh, presentations. And I would like to wish them, uh, regardless the results, uh, to continue in their ideas and fulfilling their dreams. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. Jan? Hi, everybody. I'm Jan. I am from food industry. I'm executive director of one company whose name is McCarter. We are a very innovative company. We bring something new in this field. I'm external teacher in the Agro University Nitra and Technical University Bratislava. I wish all the best 
everybody. Good luck. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's Milan, Daniel, and Jan as our official jury today. As you can see, we have all the expertise, all the support, all the training required. What the world seems to need most is Shians and Purans to push the world to a better place when it comes to the food industry. Ladies and gentlemen, time for our first competitor. Time for Pilo, reusable natural bee wax food packaging. Hi, my name is Tomas Bukovan and I'm a co-founder of Pilo, a reusable beeswax packaging. Hundreds of, pro hundreds of thousands of products are being sold every day, but unfortunately most of it is wrapped in a single-use packaging that cannot be used again. This, of course, creates a lot of unnecessary waste that ends up straight in landfills. The reason is that the current thinking about packaging is that its only purpose is to protect the food until it reaches your home and then it's no longer needed. We're trying to change this by offering an alternative that's reusable, practical and then you can keep home, such as this guy, a glass jar. Most people will probably keep it and use it for something else. So what is Pilo, you're asking? Pilo is a reusable packaging made out of beeswax and cotton that keeps the food fresh for much longer. Uh, it's a natural alternative to food wrap that you can wa easily wash and reuse again. Apart from just protecting the food, Pilo keeps the food fresh longer because it lets it breathe. It also has antibacterial properties it's foldable and sticky. It's completely natural and fully compostable. By our estimate, one pillow wrap can save up to 300 meters of food wrap, which is a lot. Um, what makes us special is that we have developed our own production technology, um, which enabled us to significantly reduce the production costs and therefore offer a affordable alternative to single-use packaging. Our business model is pretty simple. Um, we can showcase it on this piece of cheese. Um, the customer at the store can choose between buying the cheese in a single-use packaging as he would normally do or pay a little bit extra to get um, second product on top our wrap, our pillow wrap, that he can reuse for another cheese or for another piece of food and it will keep his cheese fresh for much longer. Um, the shop also can easily upsell the customer this way and make some extra money on selling the packaging itself. Um, what's great about Pilo is that uh, we can custom print it, we can cut it into different sizes and we can customize the packaging. Our core team consists of three people, me as a co-founder focusing on sales and production, Martina the other co-founder focusing on marketing and my father who's an engineer and he's leading the development of the production line. The reason why we need further funding is to um, increase the production capacity, to further develop the production technology and automation. Um, we would also like to experiment with uh, new materials such as instead of cotton and expand to new markets. Um, we are currently fully running company uh, we already have a couple of clients and um, at the moment we are in talks with one of the largest uh, Czech cheese producers to um, do uh, a pilot test of uh, selling our um, wraps with their cheese products. Thanks for your attention and have a nice day.
Ladies and gentlemen, that was Pilo, our first competitor. We have Thomas joining us live now. Hello, Thomas. Hi, Lucas. Hi, how are you? Good, good. <laughs> it's funny to um, how does it feel watch yourself to be online. The first today? Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, it feels good because um, you know you're not stressed out and you don't know what to expect, so you just um, go with the flow. Well, enjoy. Five minutes only. Time for the Q and A. Hello, Tomas. I would like to ask how Hi. to motivate the people use uh, this package system or the package uh, model uh, more times. Because a lot of people use only one time this uh, packing and put to the garbage. How to motivate the people to change the mind? In, with your products, mm. is it possible? Um, <laughs> that's a good question, actually. Um, I think it kind of comes down to the practicality of the um, of the packaging itself, because as you know, as you know, um, let's say a glass jar, as I mentioned in the presentation, is something that um, I'm not saying everyone, but uh, you know. There is quite a lot of people that will, that will eat the content and keep the jar so they can use it for something else, you know, make uh, another batch of, uh, of jam or whatever, uh, or just put some dry fruits in it. So um, I think it comes down to how practical it is and how easy it is to reuse it. Um, so we have uh, people that actually find the practicality of our um, packaging and are um, actually they're buying the product um, as a consumer product itself um, already to use at home. So um, when when they try it, usually people will um, um, use it again, and it because it's kind of simple to use it, you know, even as like a bags or something. So um, there's no change of behavior or um, you don't have to make any um, sacrifices to use the product again. Um, so um, I would say that it's essentially, um, first the the shop has to, um, has the motivation to sell the packaging to the customer, to tell him the benefits. And um, also one of the biggest benefits of the packaging is that it keeps the food fresh for longer. So the, the benefit for the customer is that his food will not um, spoil so fast. So he's motivated to use it to keep the food fresh longer. OK, thank you. Yeah, if I can have a, actually, I had a very, very similar question because the discipline of the regular customers, uh, us as a people, is, is very bad. Actually, mm -hmm. that's worst case. So that was a very good question that you should focus on. So maybe one mm -hmm. advice, you, you should focus rather on on the uh, like schools or, or closed uh, customers, not, not individuals, but maybe like McDonald's where everything stays there and, and then it can go to compost and can be reused. So I think this is something. But my question is, uh, because you say that it's biodegradable, so... So is it 100% biodegradable and is it, is it produced 100% from renewable resources? Because this is something where we are heading to. You know, there is many bioplast, different kind of terminology, but is it 100% biodegradable and is it 100% made from uh, renewable resources? Thank you. Um, it is completely biodegradable. You can compost it, you can actually um, throw it in the fire and just burn it because um, essentially it's only made out of cotton and beeswax. So um, both of these um, in ingredients are 100% natural um, and are biodegradable as itself. Um, and um, whether they are, uh, so what was the question, if they are uh, renewable, yeah, so uh, 
you actually confirm that they are renewable because if they are, okay, I did there yeah. be that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Jan, I have a question. Can you tell me something I, about I, microbiology? Because the, the potentially packaging is a risk for secondary contamination. What about your, mm -hmm. your packaging? Um, it's, uh, I would say it's the same thing as, um, I mean, of course, there is always some kind of, uh, um, uh, how did you say the, um, but even now, uh, let's say, um, we are focusing, we're slowly kind of testing, um, the possibilities and how to actually, um, sell the product itself. But um, we have Thomas, all the ingredients I'm afraid are being. We need to stop here. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yep. Not an easy question to get as the last <laughs> one, surely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thomas. Good luck in the competition. Thank you. Once Thank again. you. Thank you. Thanks to the juries. Have a nice day. Bye bye. <laughs> Same to you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Thomas Bukoven and Pilo, our first competitor. Agricultural waste into food grade compost tableware. We all know problems with single use plastics. After 10 minutes of use, they stay around us for decades or even centuries. <laughs> Only in Slovakia, we produce 30,000 metric tons of single use plastics a year. Recycling is not the solution because it does not really eliminate plastics. We have also agriculture which produce 100 million tons of bio waste in Europe every year. What can we do with all of this waste? I am here from the Ecodish project and we have solution to this. In Ecodish, we use agri-food waste to make compostable single-use dishes. We use uh, mixtures of fibrous plant residues like fruit peels, bran and pressing cakes to make single-use dishes. After use, this can be readily composted or processed to animal feed. Our product is fully sustainable, zero waste, non-toxic and convenient for customer. The global single-use tableware market is reaching over 12 billion euro and is projected to grow substantially in the coming years. The fastest growth rate is expected in the segment of biodegradable tableware. We don't want to miss the opportunity to become a part of this market. Especially in EU, the growth rate of this market is catalyzed by strict regulations of the use of disposable plastics. Current solutions are mostly based on the use of paper, recycled paper, or natural sources like bamboo and palm leaves. The young Polish-based company Biotrem used wheat bran to produce compostable tableware. We offer a different solution. Our model includes collection of used tableware and its conversion into secondary product with an added value. The market is open to new competition. Uh, no patents for basic tableware shape exist and many different materials can work for a particular shape. Our ideal customer we want to target is a green thinking company serving or, or delivering food or local festival organizer. How does our revenue model work? We offer our product to the organizer of summer festival. We sell our product and collect these dishes on site. We then add value to the waste by composting and we sell the enriched compost to our sellers such as local garden centers or directly to the end customer. In our business plan, uh, we aim to scale up the production capacities by investing into our own production plant. If we do so, our business will start making profit after 60,000 sold plates along the sales of the secondary product. This means it equals to a four year return of the initial investment. Our team has currently two members, me and Tomasz. I am responsible for the project management. I'm also a big fan of innovations. And Tomasz is experienced in toxicology and environmental safety. 
we are still seeking for more members. So if you are experienced in business, marketing and sales and you are interested in this opportunity, please contact us. In the coming period, our vision is to proceed in research and development of the product. Our ambition is to produce the first batch of dishes by the end of the festival season to test the first product version in real conditions. We need money for that and the EIT grant would help us substantially to reach this milestone. We are encouraged by developing our first product prototype in a relatively short time. If we succeed in this competition, we aim to use two thirds of the grant for development of our product and technology and one third for marketing activities to build our brand. But besides the money prize, we would also be grateful for the opportunity to gain experiences and improve our business skills. So that's it. If you want to support our idea or want to become part of our team, please contact us back by email. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our second competitor, Echo Dish. I hope you can see and hear me much better now. We've had some issues with the quality of the connection. Um, time for our Q&A. Yaroslav is live online now. Hello, Yaroslav. Hello. And we have also Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Can yeah. you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you well. Yeah. Great. It seems it's a Friday afternoon and everyone is probably trying to have a webinar across Europe and the broadbands are really busy, <laughs> I presume. Yeah, it might be the case, yeah. It might be. There are two of you ready to answer the questions and five minutes only, so enjoy. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Hello. Hello. Tomas. Hello. Hi. Okay, Hi. I would like to first, it's possible. Yeah. Yaroslav and Tomasz, I would like to ask, uh, is really uh, possible use dirty echo dish like uh, food animal? Because if I uh, have some arrest of, I don't know, meat or other uh, cooking food, I'm not uh, a professional in the field of, of animal food planning and using. I'm economist, but I'm not sure it's possible. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for this question. We don't know either so far. So uh, we are at the stage uh, when, when we produce our first prototypes and uh, processing, of course, uh, the, to convert it into animal feed will need um, some kind of processing before we can uh, sell it actually like this. Uh, so uh, we cannot uh, answer this question really clearly. So uh, it will need more testing, of course, to, to process it into this product. So, so far we developed our first prototype and in the meantime we were also able to produce a cup. So we are happy with this and this encourages us to continue in the research. But uh, this, of course, uh, testing of the, of the microbiological and toxicological issues we, will be a part of our next uh, uh, steps. Okay, thank you so much, but I'd like to talk that idea is, is very well. Thank you very thank much. You. Yeah, I, I would like to ask you about the crop residues. Uh, do, can you combine any type of crop residues or you have a specific recipe for the uh, making the echo dish, you know, or or is it is it a very specific and you have to combine it with uh, different types? I I I think it's hundred percent crop residues, or do you have some additives into it? So, so about input, thank you. Yeah, so so um, first uh, prototypes that we have, uh, I actually uh, I'm a kind of person that uh, that don't or doesn't uh, want to throw away useful things, so I use. Uh, um, some waste from my kitchen and garden to, to produce this uh, first prototype. So it's uh, actually peels from apples and uh, uh, potatoes and some um, uh, leaves and also some types of bran. 
So uh, we mix it together and apparently it worked for us for now, but uh, of course the, the materials uh, or the mixture of materials can be diverse. So that's uh, what's uh, also advantage of this approach because we can use diverse uh, crop residues uh, for this purpose, or at least uh, it worked uh, in, in our case uh, uh, um, using this prototype. But of course there is a huge space for improving them still uh, the technology and also the, the raw materials but so far we are encouraged with these uh, results that we got so far but the main material must be fibers yeah structure it is the yeah, yeah. it is the main point so in order to 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 um, have the shape or, or keep the shape uh, it should be a fibrous plant material to to use yeah thank you Gentlemen, I have a question about migration test. By law, this is direct contact between food and packaging. Do you have these tests? No. So so far, as uh, as I said, uh, we have uh, only the prototype and uh, and a plan uh, what to do next uh, in the next period. So our next milestone is to produce the first uh, product. Uh, batch uh, until the end of the, the festival season so that we can test it in a real condition so i mean um we, we don't have like uh, certificates or, or something like that uh, but um, uh, in the in the meantime when we proceed with the testing and first of all we, we need to scale up uh, our production capacities uh, then uh, these types uh, of certifications will be of course needed but so far we would like to show up uh, at the local festivals, local events organized by our university uh, in the autumn for the students to show them um, something that something like this is possible to do and if they will be interested uh, in using this product. Mm -hmm. So it will be also part of our, of our uh, marketing uh, or advertising of the product. We also want to, to produce some promotional video, professional one to, to advertise our brand and product more. And mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we have to test in real conditions, yeah? For example, waterproofing in a microwave, etc. So we need the feedback from the customers, so the students or uh, family days and uh, smaller festivals organized by the university. And then we can continue with uh, our technology or with the next ideas, etc. But definitely it's a huge space for improvement. And uh, actually the price will uh, will be crucial to, to reach this milestone to produce our first batch because with our current technology we are simply not, uh, not able to produce much more plates uh, in, a, in a given time. So we want to finish our homemade press machine to, to be able to squeeze the, the biomass into a desired shape if it's a cup or That's plate. We or... really need to stop here, I'm afraid. I was waiting for you to finish the sentence, which turned out to be a more compound sentence than I originally thought. Gentlemen, <laughs> congratulations <laughs> on answering the jury questions today and good luck in the competition. Thank you. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Yaroslav and us from Echo Dish Dish and now we need to skip Wizzy uh, because Alzbeta is having a hard time trying to connect today to our connection. So let's proceed to meeting. Uh, meeting brings processed meat from farmer directly to consumer. My name is Philip and it is my pleasure to introduce you our project called Meeting. This picture illustrates where our story started. Me and my sister grew up on the family farm with over 800 cows. Growing up, we saw how hard our parents have to work, had to work to make a profit. The most challenging but the rewarding way was to add some additional value to the meat they produced. That's why we decided to start a project which would reduce the number of parties on the meat waste needs waste to the customer by our approach we believe to grant farmers with five to ten percent higher prices than they regularly get from the slaughterhouse to be able to do that we had to increase the quality of our product and thus we decided to employ the method of sewage processing last but not least we feel responsible towards the environment 
So we want to provide our customers with a smartphone application which would recognize unique barcode of each cooking batch and would create a reminder of the expiry date. The general scheme of our project starts at certified farms which need to fulfill our internal requirements, for example, no GMO feed, etc. After slaughtering, we would buy the meat for, for the proclaimed fair price. We would process the meat according to our proven recipes and offer it online for the customer. Upon the purchase, the meat would be delivered to the customer who would easily prepare the meal of high standards within a few minutes. Briefly, the method we use for the meat processing is called sous vide and is determined by long cooking time at low temperature in the vacuum. That enables meat to retain juiciness and prolongs its expiration date. In our business model, we target a targeted wide group of people in working age, starting with resp responsible parents who want to provide their children with high quality meat, up to employees of huge corporations who return from work in late hours but des desire after meal of restaurant standards. Our products would be sold via eShop using various strateg strategies. An average Slovakian family of four consumes over 250 kilograms of meat per year. If we can reach up to 1,000 households and sell them 30 kilograms of our products of average price of 10 euros, we would be able to generate income of 300,000 euros per year. The market with quality meat of home production is expanding. However, it often doesn't benefit the farmer. Based on our research, our products could be purchased by the comparable price. However, the quality in terms of origin, breeding conditions, meat processing and quality of the final product would differentiate us on the market from our competition. Our team is composed so far of two people, my sister Zuzana and myself. We both have strong background in agriculture and food science. Our vision is displayed on this timeline. After first idea, we were able to do initial steps towards success by certifying first farms and testing recipes. With the help of EIT Food Innovation Prize, we would be able to launch the eShop, thoroughly raise the awareness of our products and sell them to our customers. Within the three years, we believe to offer this model to the European country, to other European countries. And what kind of help we would need from EIT? By succeeding in this contest, we would work on protection of our intellectual property. We would invest into good marketing plan. And obviously we would use the starting capital in the creation of production laboratories. So if you like our idea and you think about investing in our idea or you consider yourself an expert in marketing, please contact me. It was nice to meet you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was meeting. We have Philip joining us live now. Hi, Philip. Hello, Lukas. Hi, can you see me, hear me well? Because we seem to be facing some incredibly nerve wracking issues with the connection quality. <laughs> yes, yeah, so far it's good for me. So far, so good. Are you ready for the Q&A? Yeah, let's Five do minutes. it. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. I would like to first one more time. <laughs> okay, Philip, I would like to ask, uh, I'm not sure about your business model. Uh, it's a meet uh, or will be meet uh, only the platform or will be 
produced the final products, final cooking meat. Uh, okay, so the <clears throat> meat will be uh, processed by us. So the we add some additional value to the to the product, so we can uh, uh, benefit the farmer with a higher price. Because if we were selling the raw meat, uh, we would not be able to to offer the farmer a fair price. So that's why we decided to to offer the processed meat. I don't know if I if I uh, correctly understood your question. Though. I would supplement the question uh, because again, it's it's very similar to what I thought. When do you step into the process? Because you say that the farms will be approved according to internal criteria. So will you assess the farm or will you will use some kind of already register or because when you say you want to help the farmer, uh, do you also slaughter the animals or you buy it from the slaughterhouse? And if you buy it from the slaughterhouse, is it again, it has to be certified in Slovakia, etc. So what exactly is where, where do you step into the value chain? Okay, so uh, we would uh, work with uh, only farms which uh, have their uh, own slaughtery house. So, uh, and we already have few farms which uh, are certified according to our internal criter uh, criteria, which includes, uh, as I said, uh, non-GMO foods, ability for animals to, to be grazing, to, to go to pasture, uh, etc. So, uh, and so that's that's the idea that uh, the farmer would uh, raise the the animal uh slaughter it and afterwards we would step in and uh, process the meat and distribute it to the customers yeah i have information do you have some idea or analysis about shelf life Oh, I've never heard of the shelf life. I don't know what I mean, what you... expiration time. How, how many days you have for distribution from production to final oh, customer? Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you for the explanation. Well, uh, for the this processed meat, it's it's okay to to stay in the in the fridge for for three or four weeks. Depends on the meat, of course. Uh, but this, the vacuuming and the, the cooking or sous vide processing uh, prolongs the time of the expiration. Mm -hmm. And what about the e-shop distribution? Do you have idea if exists some chilled distribution for this type of product? Uh, not yet, not yet. So uh, that's why we decide. Uh, we were thinking that we would either uh do it on demand that they uh, we would get the orders and uh we would distribute it uh once uh once a week or twice a week uh according to to orders or we also could uh send it on the on the dry ice for example uh or or, or something something like that mm, this or is very very option Sorry, this is very difficult because you know you must keep condition from production to final customers. Same temperature, same humidity, uh, microbiology protection, UV light protection, a lot of factor. This is a very expensive distribution. Yeah, yeah, that's why the first first uh, option or first first way for us would be a distributing it it uh, once a week, let's say, or twice a week, uh, depending on the on the demand. Okay, by, thank you. Of course, by in the in chilled conditions. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thirty seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Do we have any further and questions? Do you plan, Quick one. Do you plan own delivery system or external delivery system? Oh, uh, probably own would be would be the best, because if we if we had someone else doing it, uh, we would have another. Uh, another party in our chain and that would uh, increase the meat uh, increase the price of the meat so yeah but that will be very expensive like to mr duets <laughs> ladies and gentlemen well, that's yeah, exactly five minutes <laughs>
So thank you very much for the discussion and thank you for the Q&A. Uh, Philippe, once a queue, and good luck with your project. Thank you very much, Lukas. Have a great day. Thank evening. you. Same to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now proceed to our fifth competitor, Eco Life Darina, production of organic fertilizer by, by ecological refining of minerals, Darina Stiriakova. Hey, my name is Darina Stiriakova. I am from Ecolife and we produce organic bio fertilizer from processed waste for safe food production and healthy environment. Increased usage of pesticides and chemical fertilizers leads to many environmental and health problems. Soil is degraded and microorganisms are killed. Plants and crops are unhealthy and weak, which again leads into increased usage of these dangerous pesticides. Our food is contaminated. New data shows that more 85% of our food contains pesticide residues and animals like bees are killed. But organic fertilizers are very expensive. Solution can be our technology, bioleaching by heterotrophic bacteria. We use this technology for minerals refining. We turn low quality minerals into high quality and high value minerals, and our byproduct is organic biofertilizer. It's economical solution and it contains dissolved natural minerals. And organic metabolites produced by bacteria have pesticide effect. And by this, we can renew soil-friendly bacteria. This leads into increasing health and fertility of soil and into increasing crop growth and yield and their immunity to diseases. Here is our customer, uh, Termi Deposit in Slovenia, where we produce 300 tons of high-quality silica sand for Stolce Glass Group. Uh, we increase value from 20 to 55 euro per ton of this raw material. But at the same time, we produce uh, organic biofertilizer in price up to 80 euro per cubic meter. There is demand 45,000 tons per year for this glass company of this high quality and purity sand, which will lead into production 90,000 cubic meters of organic biofertilizer for all local farmers. Our business model has two sides. Uh, first one is fees from local deposits, uh, where is license fee and royalty fee and uh, continuous bacteria and nutrition supply. And second side is for local agriculture, where we have revenue sharing with local wholesalers. And if needed, we provide optimization and it's sold under our certification and trademark. Regarding market, there is 17 billion uh, euro uh, in terms of organic fertilizers and biofertilizers together with growing tendency. And Europe is second largest consumer at the market and having 30% of shares of global market. There are strong regulations on chemical fertilizers and EU is continuously encouraging farmers to use biofertilizers. Regarding competition, there are companies existing and they are producing or organic fertilizers or biofertilizers, but they are very expensive. Our solution is combined solution and we are very cheap because this is our byproduct. Regarding financials, we invested already 150,000 euro. We are partner in EIT projects. We having first contracts with global market players and we made revenue 33,000 euro last year. Regarding milestones, we already have trademarks for fertilizer, bacteria and nutrition. Now we are launching pilot operations in Slovenia and Germany and we are currently working on a patent by PCT Road. And now we want to certify fertilizer according new legislation and place it on the market. Later, we want to design cereal production and build our nutrition and bacteria plant and launch platform to connect deposits with local farmers and local manufacturers. Here is our highly experienced team in biotechnologies, uh, where first row is three founders. Then there is head of R&D, my mother actually, inventor of the technology. Then we have uh, our commercial manager and operational manager. Impact it will have uh, on society that we will have healthy and safe food uh, for environment that means non-toxicity and so will be remediated and crops will be again strong. 
and economical impact is for deposit owners that they will have high revenue and for farmers that mean local cheap bio-organic alternative. Uh, impact of this price that we will use it for fertilizer certification and market placement, but most important for us is networking in EIT food community. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and let's innovate together. We're looking for cooperation and for farmers to test our solution. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Darina from Ecolive. We have joining her now today. Darina, hello. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm great. I can hear you well and see you well, which is some okay. progress after the rehearsal. Darina, how are you feeling? Are you ready for the Q&A session? Yeah, of course. Like always, I am always okay. ready. <laughs> no further delays. Enjoy. Five minutes. Hello. Yeah, Darina, if I can ask uh, a question. Uh, at the beginning, you say that uh, you speak about also pesticides, but this is purely fertilizer, right? This is yeah, it's, bio it, it's not replaced uh, pesticides, as I understand. Okay, I will try to explain. Uh, we have already the confirmation from few institutes in uh, Austria that uh, yes, it is fertilizer. But uh, regarding pesticide effect, we are working now in cooperation with one English uh, institute in England. And uh, because there are such uh, new topics that uh, organic acids produced by bacteria can replace uh, pesticides. Okay, because in the Green Deal, it looks that pesticides will have to be redu reduced drastically. And I ju was just wondering whether this your product could help to decrease pesticide use in agriculture. Yeah, okay, it's thanks. Actually, actually, it's actually about this because, uh, yeah, uh, industry is really looking for technology which will produce organic acid. And there are not existing such technology. And our process actually is industrial process for production of or organic acids. Okay, thank you. Karina, I would like to ask you, uh, how, how about uh, quantification, the functionality or the power or standardization of your product? Because it's the biofermenter, I think. Yes. yes. Yes, uh, this we have to cooperate uh, with uh, one German company we are already cooperating uh, because they are experts on biofertilizers and fertilizers. Unfortunately, we are really more experts on biotechnology, so we need support in this case. That's why we are looking for in this EIT food community, that we will find some strong partners. Okay. Do you have some tools how, how direct, how regulate this process? Mm, I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, if you produce something, bacteria, something, you need some tool like temperature and something. How do you regulate this process? Uh, actually, we operate mostly during the summer. Let's say we are starting from spring and operating yeah, till autumn. Uh, and our process or bacteria are frozen in the winter. But also the sand pits are not operating in the winter. So our operation, yeah, is mostly from 10 degrees and more. Mm. Okay, thanks. Okay, I would like to ask, could you describe me bet, uh, better or more some your business model? Because uh, I'm not absolutely uh, sure uh, how is the benefits for the uh, one and second part of your model. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will try. So let's say our first and direct customers are local deposits. And there we, based on our patent, we will have license fee, royalty fee, and continuous nutrition and bacteria supply. And uh, in case of agriculture, because by this minerals refining, every deposit will pro produce uh, this biofertilizer, this organic biofertilizer. And there we will have agreement with local wholesalers, uh, which will be based on the revenue sharing model. Okay, thank you. You will be used some farmers to produce. 
yeah, for well, local farmers. Uh, yeah, uh, the the deposits can supply local farmers around. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sounds like we have no further questions. All right. Thank you very much, Darina. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed answering questions. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much as well. well. You know, Darina, the fewer the questions, the more impressive the presentation, perhaps. You never know. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our next startup, Bezodpadowy Wratny Obal z Prislusieństwom Lubomir Stancek, Ecological Packaging, Returnable Waste Free Packaging with Accessories. Let me introduce myself. My name is Lubomir Stancek, and I introduce a patented solution of waste free reusable packaging with accessories. Uh, from author Mr. Michalko. Uh, this uh, project uh, can uh, saving uh, the cost up to 80%, produce uh, zero plastic uh, waste and uh, uh, has very quick royal. History of this project, uh, Mr. Michalko started 20 years ago. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have good cooperation with three technical uh, universities in Žilina and Bratislava in Slovakia and FH Campus Vienna. What we offer in our project? Firstly, machine wrapping and unwrapping. Bottles are reusable. Foil, polyethylene foil after use in the compost. Lid returnable and collection, collection container with reed. Uh, after using of uh, this uh, packaging, you don't produce uh, waste. Plastic bottles are, are reusable. Foil, um, biodegradable or foil can be burned as a supplement. Lead is reusable. Uh, results, we don't use standard recyclation processes. This system is applicable uh, in the industries as follows petrochemical industry, pharmaceutical industry, chemical industry, building and construction industry, cosmetic industry, agro-food and agrochemical industry. We have here example of using uh, the packaging, uh, use it for B2B or B2C, uh, customers for washer fluid for cars. After a period of four years, you can see the profit and waste production. What uh, investment costs for customer, they decision what they buy or lease. Machine wrapping and unwrapping plastic bottle, form for bottle and lid, foil biodegradable, lid, collection technology and fees. Uh, the author of this uh, project is Mr. Michalko and my name is Lubomir Stancic. If we win prize money, they will be used for marketing and we uh, want to uh, have a new contact here and uh, would be very happy if we, good, uh, if we got a new contact. Thank you for your attention.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have Lubomir joining us now live for the Q&A session. Hello, Lubomir. Hello, Lukas. Hi. I may have mispronounced the name of your concept terribly, but I tried my best, Lubomir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I must say uh, this, is, uh, this, this concept is a long, uh, long time uh, here in the world and uh, at the moment uh, we are ready to produce our, uh, our packagings and we started now, can, can I open say, the trial production and hope that with success. Yeah, it's, it actually sounds interesting that the longer the life of a project, the longer the name should be, I suppose. <laughs> Lubomir, are you Five ready words. for the Q&A session? <laughs> yeah, precisely. Are you ready for the Q&A session, sir? Okay, yes, I think so. Yeah, so just, just make sure you enjoy. Yeah, if I can, if I can start, uh, to be honest, I was not 100% sure what is the patent about? Is it a new product that you developed or it's a new material uh, that you replace the plastic? And also if you can uh, expand a bit on, on wrapping and unwrapping because I don't understand what, what you meant when, when we speak about technology. So, so if you can explore a little bit on this, thank you. Yes, uh, this concept on the, this project, patented project is based on the new art of the packaging. Uh, today you have a very thick, thin, thin uh, uh, wall of packaging. We, Mr. Michalko made it 180 degrees. Yes, we use two, two, two to five millimeter thickness of wall, and this this uh, packaging can be used hundred times. One thousand, one times, uh, one thousand times, and uh, what is today the waste we used uh, as reusable material? This packaging, and you uh, change only uh, foil. Uh, this foil is uh, has uh, has a characteristic of uh, of uh, uh, shrink, and you you package uh, inside and outside this is this this packaging and you change only only with uh, air under pressure and uh, our pressure this 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 foil is waste and after after using of this packaging this foil maybe maybe uh, maybe uh, go to 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 compost industry compost is is a patented a system as whole system has a, a repackage maker machine firstly secondary you have new new way of packaging re, uh, reusable and third you 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 don't need any uh, water by uh, 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 repackaging, and All you right. don't produce Two any waste. Okay, thank you. Lubomir, I would like to ask you. You describe some part of packaging. Can you tell me which part is the plant base and which part is the oil base? Uh, I don't understand this, this question. I mean, uh, some part, you define lead. What is the yes. raw material for production, this lead? Is the oil ah. or the plant based? And I need yeah. information for each part. What is, what is raw material? Raw material for packaging is polyethylene, basically. But uh, this packaging can be produced from wood, from uh, other, from from other way of plastics like like recyclat, yes, or from metal. What is was what cost cost mean is the lowest cost. We can use that as as as, as packaging. And inside you, you can know, use. Sorry. 
please. Sorry, uh, this question is oriented for CO2 food because now everybody won't reduce CO2 production. And if your material include oil-based material, this is not more perspective. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I understand now your question. We have a, we have a special uh, software is uh, especially uh, oriented on CO uh, reducing. I can I can see you uh, I can I can uh, send you uh, how many CO you produce after using of this new new material uh, this new packaging and I can uh, I can say how, what you what you produce today I don't know if you me uh, understand me is new art of software is not uh, today to use <laughs> no, no, nowhere we know okay. about it if you if you have some interest i can give you some more informations okay thank you thank you and that closes our five minutes for the discussion <laughs> thank you very okay. much lubomir for participating hope you enjoyed it thank you, thank you once again i don't know I try uh, to do my best. I hope that the the world must be clear without waste in oceans and nowhere. <laughs> we definitely all agree with you on that one. And good luck today and good luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you, Lubomir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now proceed to our next competitor, QuaHack, measurement of body temperature, detecting face masks, analyzing emotions. Uh, the situation in the whole Europe since the beginning of this year was a bit different. For example, in Slovakia, the most of the shops has been uh, closed, but only one kind of a store which was always open was a grocery store. When we decided to do some shopping, uh, the shops done really strict prevention. They were maybe measuring our body temperature. We had to protect ourselves by wearing um, face mask, gloves, using disinfection. Uh, some of the stores had a limited number of people they could walk in. Marketing managers uh, change the strategy. They start um, very quick gathering data about customers' feedback um, and so on. Um, for all those for problems, we create a solution. The solution uh, called a device Quack. My name is Patrick, and uh, my team and I we create this device to help uh, customers, visitors, employees um, to create better in working and shopping environment, and for marketing managers to gather data about customers' uh, feedback. Uh, device Quack you can apply in any kind of uh, building, in the um, hospitals, um, schools, shops. Uh, by uh, placing this device uh, into uh, entering corridor, which will be scanning people's faces and through artificial intelligence will analyze if a person is healthy or not. If it's healthy, it will allow a person to walk in. If it's sick, it will refuse it to protect others. Uh, this is one of the um, functions of this device. The other function is um, connected uh, with a disinfection unit, which will be disinfecting uh, an uh, area around it by killing bacteria by six times. For marketing purposes, uh, we'll be gathering data about uh, customer analytics uh, that will uh, count number of people who walk in. Uh, we'll gather data about uh, customers' gender, age, and length of shopping. The most important uh, feature of this technology is emotional index, which will be gathered from facial expressions uh, of the customer is walking in and compares to facial expressions while walking out. Uh, these two facial expressions will be put together and will be um, output will be emotional index of the customers as a as a, a feedback for for marketers or marketing managers about customers um, customers uh, satisfaction uh, from um, shopping environment um, and so on. Our business model works. We so far we have invested 10,000 uh, K from our buying savings. We're missing another 20 K to finish um, programming of software uh, for artificial intelligence. The break even point will be to sell 20 devices. One device price will be around 3,000 euros. We will be charging our customers monthly fee for software and servicing. Uh, as I mentioned, we will make money from sales, rental, licensing, from uh, research and development too. Our customers is B2B sector. 
um, Bila, for example, they have 150 stores around uh, Slovakia. If we apply our technology only in 10 day stores, 10% of their stores, it will make um, 45,000 uh, uh, euros revenue. Competitors, there are a few of them in Slovakia, but none of them is using or offering such a complex device with so many functions as us, and uh, none of them is so affordable as our device. Uh, also, a big advantage is that our device is patented for three countries, Slovakia, Czech Republic, and Germany. Uh, milestones, so far, we also uh, created a cloud system for remote uh, controlling and management. Uh, we got two potential um, clients. They are interested in our device, our technology. From now on, we'll be looking for an investor to help us to finish programming of artificial intelligence software. And um, next year and this time, we would like to have a, a sold 100 devices. Ada Food Innovation Prize will definitely help us um, to create proper uh, marketing strategy and non-financial prize uh, help will help uh, either to find investor or create better brand awareness or um, do some good networking. Uh, from our team, uh, me, Patrick, I'm looking after marketing. Jakub is successful founder of Startup Samo Europe. He owns multiple patents and utility models. Dalibor is looking at finance, taxation, and uh, and accounting. Has a lot of experience in this area. And Jano, uh, he is a hybrid software developer uh, in our team. Um, that will be all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm happy uh, to answer your questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Quehek. We have Patrick Yurchishin joining us live now. Hi, everyone. Hi, Patrick. Hi, how are you today? Thank you very much, very well. How are you today? I'm great. Sunny afternoon on a Friday afternoon also. Uh, hope it's sunny in your place. It is, yes, of course, and very hot as well. Well, let's all hope you keep the positive mood at the end of the Q&A and enjoy. Thank you. Hi, judges. How are you? Hey, Patrick. I would like to ask, I think this is a very good idea, but I would like to ask a few questions. Uh, does the BILA uh, agree uh, your soul uh, or do you have some, uh, or your business supply? Do you have some contracts with, uh, with this market? This is the first. Uh, the second, I would like to ask, uh, how does the system uh, recognize the people with special needs? Uh, example, without the face mask, because we have some uh, type of people. Uh, and the rest, or the last, uh, where is the added value? in the compare with the other solution systems uh, on the market? Sure, thank you very much. Well, we don't have agreement with Bila uh, at the moment. It was uh, just an example that Bila can be one of our customers. Um, so those two customers or potential clients, they are interested in our device, uh, are not uh, from um, retail. One of the customers interested in this device is from from uh, gastronomy or from, um, from it's, it's, it's a hotel. And the second one, it's a uh, manufacturer. They are manufacturing or producing mineral waters. So they want to apply this into the manufacturing um, area. Um, into your uh, second question, artificial intelligence will be scanning faces and based on based on temperature into the, into the face, based on temp uh, body temperature or, or face temperature, uh, will be recognizing if a person has any symptoms, if, if, if it has any, if, it, if it's sick or not, just as simple as that. And if it's, of course, if it's healthy, it, the person will be uh, let into this store as protect um, grocery stores during pandemic for health people to be able to shop. And the third question is added value. This, uh, this technology is, uh, is affordable. It's not as ex expensive as uh, the, the competitors' devices, and it offers not only a health check system, but it also gather all marketing data, which are very expensive in these times. So for marketing managers, they can scan uh, people's faces and get those um, emotions or those facial expressions, and based on this, they can 
they can create marketing strategies. So they have, they know in real in time about customer satisfaction and customer feedback. They don't need to ask them, are you happy, you not? Can you click on this? Can you fill up a survey? No. As soon as you walk in, as soon as you walk out, they got your data, of course, correct with GDPR, everything with law, so they can they can develop better strategies based on this. I hope you had put my <laughs> answer in. Right. Patrick, I have a question about how, how precise is working your machine because it's some measurement, yeah? This is some decision maker. And and second question is about calibration, validation. Uh, well, this device um, is not at the moment, but it will be as soon as we finish this artificial intelligence software programming, it will be a cure on 90%. So 90% will be accuracy of the of the measurement and the calibration. You don't need any calibration as soon as you have those uh, good environment in there. Good environment means a good uh, light, which is normal in the shopping malls. So there is no need any any calibration for this. I mean, if you measure temperature, this is a measurement, and each measurement yes, by yes. law is necessary to calibrate because you say this is 93 or 33, this must be calibrated. Well, of course, this device is uh, certified, certified by the uh, Slovakian uh, measurement um, office, which gives a certificate to this technology that is, uh, is secure. It does measure temperature with all the standards. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's a pity not here last year to present it, you know, on the on the award session because then you will be probably much more successful on the market. But of course, it's difficult to predict what happened. Uh, I have I have just one question, which is more strategic, I would say, because this is EIT food, you know, and I understand that this is health related. But what are the other interlinks with the food that you could? You could try to explain or, or, or attach it to the because you know the winner will will go to the European competition and it's EIT food. So, do you have some kind of uh, to use this uh, technology related more to food? That would be my question. Thank you, Patrick. So, well, well, we would like to protect the food industry during pandemic, as simple as that. We would like to secure people, they could do the shopping even if it is COVID-19 or any kind of any kind of other situation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jury. Uh, thank you, Patrick. That was Patrick Yurchishin, Quehek, his concept. Congratulations, Patrick. Once again, good luck in the competition and with your project. Thank you very much. See you guys. See you. Ladies and gentlemen, our next competitor, Lokalny Terch, a map and search engine of local producers of food and beverages. What agricultural food problem is bothering us in Slovakia? In Slovak stores, only 30% of food comes from domestic production. Every day, over 800 trucks from abroad bring us food. The result is an unnecessary transport and pollution, loss of rural jobs, and import of tasteless fruits and vegetables. My name is Peter Pashak. The goats in the picture are from my parents' family farm where I grew up. From an early age, I was tasting home-grew vegetables and freshly picked fruits. I found out how much work is needed to produce fresh cheese or wine. It has created my view on the quality of food. After graduating the University of Software Engineering in Bratislava, I started thinking how to connect my passion for local products with my profession and thus help to improve Slovak agriculture problems. I realized that the best way to help is buy food from local producers. Since working as a web developer, I started collecting information about manufacturers and created an online map and a search engine for people who are looking for local products. Gradually, I discovered that in order to achieve the desired effect, uh, it is necessary to partially exit the online world. I was inspired by functioning of foreign concept and started organizing pre-order markets. How does it work? Uh, selected local producers will publish their offers on our web from which customers can order. Uh, the producers prepare the orders and bring them to the marketplace at a given date and time. 
Customers buy orders directly from the producers and take home quality products. We call it the concept local market. Uh, its uh, main advantages are that the customers can access a number of local products in one place. Uh, customers do not have to worry about the origin of the products and get to know the people who made it for them. Online pre-orders ensure that producers know the exact amount of, uh, of good to prepare and deliver. Organizing markets on a regular basis will create a new ch uh, sales channel for producers and support the creation of jobs and a local community. Uh, thanks to pre-orders, the market can only last about an hour, so producers do not have to spend a whole day uh, in the marketplace. The short supply chain ensures the freshness of products for the customers and fair river, uh, reward for the producer. Our business model is built primarily on a 50% commission for, uh, from sales. We want to get financing from advertising and from paid services on our web in the future. We use social networks and local media for promotion. We also cooperate with local governments. Our customers base consists of uh, smaller producers and cons consumers. According to surveys and statistics, more than 77% of customers prefer local products and up to 84% are willing uh, to pay extra for the better quality food. Uh, similar uh, pre-order farmer markets are operating successfully on the countries. Our competitors are various farms, uh, shops, e-shops and markets. Our main advantage over the competi uh, competition is that we combine the benefits of online shopping with uh, personal pickup of orders to ensure the short supply chain and low operating costs. Uh, we finance the development of web portals from our own resources. We manage to re uh, raise some money in the form of advertising, but our main source of income should gradually be a commission from sales in local markets. During the first market we organized in June, uh, the, go the goods uh, from uh, of more than 1,000 euros were sold, some producers and about 50 customers attended. Other producers are already promised to participate in the future. We launched the portal in the 2017 together with the map and search engine. This year we started to organize local markets in which we plan to uh, continue regularly. Uh, we plan to launch uh, them in the other cities and organize them more often. Uh, the founder of the project is me, Peter Pashak. Since 2011, uh, I have been professionally developing the web portals. Tasha Chana is in charge of communication and Lucia Jakubcova in online marketing. Uh, on the link, you will find the information about our next local market, which will be placed again in Jan and Ronom. The Innovation Prize can help us launch local market in other cities and enable us to bring local products closer to the larger number of customers. We would also use it to promote the activities and improve the web design and user interface. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Lokalny Ter. We have Peter Basha joining us live now. Hello, Peter. Hello. Sorry. Oh, Hi, I'm Peter. And this is Dasha. Hi, hi there. Hi. Right. Now I see Dasha, finally. You were not there during the rehearsal, Dasha. Uh, how are you feeling today? Quite good. Good. Quite good. Thank you. Quite covers it, hopefully. We have a five-minute Q&A. I'm sure the jury will have lots of interesting questions. Ready? Yes. Enjoy. Hello. My question, do you have some information from veterinary control about your system of distribution, some legislation, some law rule? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. If we, when we organized the first market, it was all uh, organized uh, according to the law and um, to the standards, and we talked to the veterinary um, institution. How how you choose the product? Because now you want to choose to fruit or vegetable or baker baker product or the meat product. You you want cover everything. Uh, yeah, basically we want to have a variety uh, for the um, uh, the buyers to choose from. 
And um, yeah, we, we like to choose for every city where we want to organize the market, we would like to choose uh, uh, the producers that are the closest uh, to the city. And do you have some some technical equipment like like fridge, uh, the hygienic nor washing equipment, everything on, on the street? This would be up to the producers. Uh, if it's like uh, something like a cheese, uh, they would have to have their uh, their own fridge um, fridge in the car and uh, yes. yeah, and all the all the permissions for selling such such goods. Okay, thank you. Communities of agriculture is a uh, very good idea. A few years ago, uh, we realized uh, research in this field in the Slovak University of Agriculture. But I would like to talk that people are very comfortable now. Uh, do you, uh, it is a possibility to use some uh, delivery system or it's only the platform for for some uh, markets, traditional markets. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a far far away plan for the future, but it's uh, quite expensive to have the own delivery system. So maybe to connect with some other deliveries, uh, but it will be difficult because it's delivery of uh, food. So again, we need free refrigerators, cars, and and so on. So. Right now, the project is about uh, the map and uh, the search engine, and uh, now we try to organize th these local markets uh, to um, to earn some money. And far away, we will try to also delivery. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like the concept. Uh, uh, it's it's actually not the brand new, I would say. Uh, the problem with this concept is how to scale it up, you know, how to grow. Uh, and there, actually, there are many platforms. Of, of course, some of them are in Slovakia, but in general, there are there are now many, many platforms. So my question is whether you were thinking, I know it's a competi competitive platform, but whether you are thinking to merge or to work with some other platforms to to scale it up, because this, I mean, it's it's good to to have local products on local market, but as a concept, if we can go beyond one city, beyond region, beyond country, whether you were thinking of, of this, because this is one of the criteria that we consider in our uh, competition, and if you go to Europe, you know, then you would have to probably face this question. Mm. I think the project is trans is because it's a web portal. I think it's uh, quite easily transformable into other countries. Um, it's easy to use for producers. So I think there is a space for like growing to other other cities, other countries. Uh, translate the portal and uh, have uh, some people to like to uh, participate and uh, to cooperate with us uh, with the markets in abroad. Yeah, I think it's the only big uh, free parking. Uh, it's uh, uh, we need uh, to organize market. So yeah, it's uh, it's not like a normal market. It's only it it can be organized uh, in a parking lot or uh, uh, in front of the university everywhere. So you don't need a special place for it. Or yeah, but that special. That's a question for the other one. Can I? A very quick one, yes. Okay, just I just wanted to remind that this is what Jan mentioned that that if you're selling it on parking lot, you have to have a fridge or you know some uh, equipment not to sell it just like uh, from the car. So this this is big, big healthy risk and hygienic risk. Thank you. Uh, right. Thank you very much. From, from uh, uh, special special cars for uh, refrigerated cars. Refrigerated. Uh, yes. Peter, Dasha, we really need to stop here. Thank you so very much. I hope you enjoyed the Q and A. Thanks. Good luck in today's competition, and good luck in the future with your project. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you once again.
Ladies and gentlemen, we had to skip Wizzy, our third competitor on the way, because we had some trouble connecting, but let's see if we can do that. Wizzy, app that helps reduce food waste, brings culinary tips and builds community. Hey, have you seen this number? Check this out. Do you see this number? That's how many kilos of food is wasted by you every year. It's a global problem with only one solution, you. No worries, I'm here to help you. But what am I? I will give you some hints. I am fridge organizer. Just scan the date and I will remind you what is still in your fridge. I am yummy finder. I analyze your fridge, find the recipe and boom, magic happens. I am hey neighbor manager. Create your community, and if you happen to miss an ingredient, just ask for it. So, do you know the answer? No? I'll tell you. I'm Wizzy, the food wizard, and I'll make the food disappear to the right hands. 110. There is more than 88 million of tons of food waste just in the European Union every single year. And this is why we want to challenge current status quo of food wasting. And to do that, we'd like to use our idea, Wizzing the Food Wizard. Our aim is to reduce food waste. And now imagine, if only 20% of those 110 is still edible food and can be shared in community, you would save more than 20 kilos of food every single year. And that's a great number to start with. We built our idea on three pillars. First of all, we are not selling an app. It will be pointless from our point of view. Instead of that, we intend to take a small share from every transaction made. And the third part is that we are going to launch the app in two modes. First, the basic mode will contain community sharing feature plus library of 100 recipes for free. And the green wizard mode will contain more add-ons with for extra fee. I keep telling that we are going to, we intend, we will, so this is actually who we are. Me and Lukas are standing behind the idea of Wizzy itself. Now we're working with Shimon, who is our tech magician with more than seven years of experience in this field. So he's currently preparing the application for us. Also, we work with Igor, who is our finance wizard with more than 30 years of experience. So definitely he knows what he is doing. And our youngest member are Jacqueline and Maciej, who are helping us with the recipe database creating. So what are our next steps? Uh, at the end of September 2020, we expect beta testing of the application and we would like to test it in a community of uh, students from local student homes. Next, in December 2020, you can see the little uh, heart on a timeline. This is when we expect full launching of the application. Further, in mid-2021, we would like to involve the restaurants and local businesses and to connect them with communities that will be already created. And next, in autumn 2021, we expect fully and stable functioning of the application. Very important question is who is going to be our target group, who will be our customers? We are aware of the fact that humanity has a great problem with food wasting, but we still believe that there are people out there who are eco-friendly, aware of this problem, and yet are socially active. We estimated the age group between 20 and 40 years, but this is just a number and anybody who is willing to step outside their comfort zone and to make a small change is more than willing to join us. Now you are maybe okay, I've heard about some such an ad before. Yeah, you could. We have we have competitors on the market, to good to go, Olio, Hungry Slovak. All of these businesses had great idea. They're working with um, reducing food waste. Food waste. They are working with local restaurants and businesses. But only Olio work on a community level or should work on a community level. But the truth is that none of these will offer you what we're offering that add-on part like fridge manager like yummy finder and all the fun aspects that differ us from the rest of the market so for now we are working as a group of friends as enthusiasts but in the future it will be inevitable for us to invest money to proper technical equipment so what would we do if we we have some extra money we would actually invest them in better and reliable server that is needed for smooth and uh, stable working of our application and also to advertising because advertising would push you forward and make you visible 
So, uh, basically this is it. This is Wizzy, the food wizard. If you want to know more, you can click on the link. Well, you cannot click right now, but you can find us on the link down below or you can uh, write us an email and we will be more than willing to answer your questions. So, thanks for watching. Yes, sincere apologies. I left it muted. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Wizzy, our last competitor. We have Alžbeta and Wukash joining us live for the Q&A. Hello. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Great. Thank you. So far, so good. <laughs> well, there are two of you, so it should be this easier to answer all of the tough jury questions. Are you ready? Yes. Ready when you are. Enjoy. Over to you. Hello. Hello. I started. I would like to ask you, uh, your system, idea, everything is fine. Can you try explain me what is differences between standard functionality IoT, Internet of Things, and your 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 project? Yeah. <laughs> Well, Internet of Things connects um, much more things like smart fridges and so on. Uh, we intend to, you can have put uh, the date of expiration manually and also set if you are open or the product is already open, so it will be the shorten the limit of the, the yeah, when it's edible. So, it's not much uh, connected with smart fridges and smart houses. It's much more simple as it is right now. It's more personal than the fridge, as you mentioned. Do you have information about system by QR code, uh, YAN code, or the, some intelligent the FID system? This is similar like your, your project. Uh, maybe you can find some similarities in there, but uh, as Lukas mentioned, we want to be more personal and uh, uh, we want to, we don't intend to um, do it just like automatic. We want you to uh, think about everything that you buy to connect it with your smartphone, put it in there to make sure that you will know what is inside. So we want to make it more personal and this is actually the big, bigger, biggest difference, I guess. Yeah because we want to work on the com push it to the more community side not just the artificial intelligence and internet of things and connections connection okay, more with people not with the machines thank you okay. i'd like to talk that it's a very good idea uh, this application but uh, i'd like to uh, question uh, in this uh, field like uh, Mr. Duret, uh, what do you think, uh, how you consider cooperation uh, or cooperating with uh, some uh, producers, some, uh, fridge manufacturers, example, Electrolux and uh, other, other company, uh, use the system or include this system or your application to, uh, to these products? Because well, uh, uh, so you have... Okay. Oh, you can, sir. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so far, we uh, didn't actually think about this possibility because, as we mentioned, we want to make it more community level. We want to build this from the point from the point zero, actually. And uh, so maybe there's a possibility to join even um, this idea, but so far we didn't work with with that. Also, it's much more difficult to create the system and write the code for this type of product so as far as we are starting it's too difficult with our limited resources and stuff but for the future it can be a great opportunity to broaden our view okay and i would like to ask you yeah, on business model uh, some premium level of this application will be uh, not free but you have to pay uh, where is the 
added value for the people in the, in the premium level of your application? Okay, actually the added value is uh, that uh, yummy fighter, that fun part of it. Because uh, as we said, even in the video, we are aware that there are people out there who think green, who are green and mean it. Okay, but there are more people out there who want to see that farm part and make it easier part and definitely that uh, yummy finder is uh, one of the added values also as another added values we would like to um, show the green visitor mode that uh, premium mode users uh, the map of other such an users and also uh, the map of uh, no waste, no waste food shops, shops uh, in their nearby area so we want to connect them yeah, it would be for the people who are really green thinking and they are mean it so it won't be just misused because they will have to pay it so it will mean something more. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if, if, if I go very to... Much, if, yeah, if I go another to, quick one. Yeah, uh, and I have the application. Uh, would that tell me what is I... I have in my refrigerator at the moment so I can compare it what I am buying at the moment so I, I, I find out that I don't have milk so I would buy it is it like yes you can always check your status of your fridge oh okay. yes whatever you put in the application thank you, you have very already. much ladies and gentlemen uh, Alspeta, Lukas congratulations on the Q&A thank you for participating it's Thank quite a future we have out there. <laughs> Hopefully it is. Yes, we'll work on it. Yeah. Thank you very much and good luck with your project and today's competition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, and that was the last startup competing in the Slovakian final. The jury will now have some time to deliberate and decide on the winners of today's country final. And it's also a perfect moment for, for us to introduce you to the voting procedure for our today's audience award. The link to the audience vote website can be seen in front of you right now on the screen together with a QR code that you can also use to go to the website. Starting from now, you have around 10 minutes to cast your vote. You can vote during the keynote speech and we'll close the voting procedure shortly after. Please go to the link we show on the screen and vote for the startup that you would like to award the audience prize. The startup that receives the biggest number of votes will also get the audience prize of 2,000 euros. Time for a, today's keynote speech. And we are joined by Radoslav Zidek from NU3Gen. Last year, NU3Gen won the first prize in the Slovakian final. NU3Gen provides a platform with absolute genetic traceability of the product. And we're happy to have Radoslav today telling us more about the company and sharing his entrepreneurial journey with us. Hello, Radoslav. Hello, Lukas. Hello, everybody. You look perfectly relaxed and enjoying yourself, apparently. I hope you enjoyed watching the individual competitors reminding yourself how stressful it may have been last year. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally relaxed now. It's a lot more better than the previous year. Yeah. Tell us more about it. Our virtual stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, firstly, I need to start my remote, and now let's go. So, I want to tell everyone that that, that was really, really fantastic one and a half hour or one hour of uh, of presentations. So, I want to tell you our story. So, uh, if you don't know our our concept, our product, so I will start with uh, some uh, information about uh, about us, and then I tell you. So what, what happens after we won this competition and uh, how it changes? Because it, it could be really in, interesting uh, information for you. So we will see. So uh, firstly, our mission was to uh, produce uh, absolute genetic traceability of products. So uh, we are geneticists and we want to produce something really special because our uh, world uh, of food is uh, quite crucial and, and uh, people uh, pretend a lot. So, and uh, we find out how to, how to solve this problem. So 
we we wanted to to produce uh, an application or or software where the consumer will have all necessary information about the product and uh, and we'll have all this information uh, on one place so uh, uh, according to European legislation also in a restaurants you need to know or you have to know uh, what is the source of your meat so it's it's a little bit different than, than previous year and uh, and in general uh, our solution is to locate uh, every single tank uh, in uh, in meat production from the origin to the product location and uh, uh, created uh, some food which uh, is certified or all these processes are certified according to uh, IOT and uh, Industry 4.0 and uh, build a community because community is crucial to to uh, to make things uh, work. So our decision uh, was based on the, um, scientific data because uh, food adulteration in meat industry is is it's really a huge problem. So I, I can see uh, on these uh, slides, so maybe 79% of, of uh, premium ham is adulterated somehow. So, and we decided to change it. So we build up an application, but it's not an application, it's a system which is based on identification on uh, animals on a farm based on DNA profiling. So which, which give us uh, opportunity to check if if uh, the producer is cheating or not. So we decide uh, to provide some kind of data to the to the uh, producer, to the farmer. For instance, the data about the animal, about the longevity, about the growth rate, and, and, and some data they, they are really useful for them. And as a reward, the farmer give us data about uh, nutrition, about husbandry, and uh, GMO in a, in a food uh, uh, food application. So we we are quite quite uh, quite um, good in this stuff because uh, we have a research behind us, and uh, so we were sure that the, that this is a really best good idea. So it changed a little bit after, but. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna tell it the story uh, step by step. So uh, the process uh, was focused also to pro processing uh, the meat because uh, uh, producers are providing uh, many information to the le uh, legislative, but uh, not so much information to to consumers. So we decide to to provide the processing information to the uh, to the consumers, and uh, we had a really really good guy, and we uh, we have him, we still have him, and he's really good in IoT and Industry 4.0, and uh, he's, he's he was really fantastic in in uh, in um, a prototype stage, and uh, in in our pipeline. Uh, there is uh, uh, there is consumer science, uh, which gives back the data to the farmers and uh, to processing companies. Uh, we also included uh, uh, um, personalization of the model, and also uh, included uh, um, uh, some kind of interaction of uh, our users. So. That was our our mission. That, that was our our goal. And uh, day after the um, demo day, we faced the reality. So uh, the first touch of the reality was many opportunities to to, to begin uh, uh, incubating uh, incubators. So so there was plenty of opportunities to be incubated um, in in many places on the planet. And uh, we realized that uh, it's quite a problematic to go there if you win just 10,000 euros. So uh, you need to spend 10,000 euros. It's quite complicated to go to New York. Uh, 
to be incubated. So uh, we pragmatically uh, make a decision that we will be incubated in Slovak in Bratislava. And uh, all right, I got a problem with my remote, small one. All right, and we pick up a uplift incubator. Uh, we uh, started to be part of Uplift, and uh, there was totally different world because we uh, we thought that, that we are really good what we are doing, but uh, in an incubator, we already knew that we have no idea about business modeling, uh, uh, product development, uh, seller strategy, and marketing uh, strategy. But uh, the good thing was that they, they tried to tell us uh, everything about this. And uh, also, we realized that, that maybe uh, presentation skills are really crucial. And uh, uh, we realized that uh, have a professional for, for presentation could be a solution. Because also, my, my broken English is not good enough for, for presenting my, my uh, result on uh, international level. So, and they are professional pictures. They are, uh, they are they, you can buy, and uh, they they could uh, drive your pitch uh, better than you. So, uh, also, so incubating process were were really fantastic, but uh, we realized that uh, they they will help us, but they are not doing our job. So, so we decided that we want to see how it works in AIT food uh, and uh, the best AIT food uh, uh, companies or startups. So uh, we decided to go to uh, Venture Summit uh, 2019 into Lisbon. And uh, it was really, really nice summit. Because, uh, oh, pardon. So it was it was a really really nice summit uh, because uh, plenty startup is was on 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 one spot and uh, everyone was able to to chat with them uh, to to observe their products to 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 breed uh, the, the the new new strategies or, or or new inventions so it was really really brilliant uh, opportunity. To, uh, to to spread all your ideas and and uh, have a meetings with uh, investors and uh, and other guys. So uh, um, how we have changed after all these processes? So so now we know that uh, our product is specific because uh, all uh, big players are dealing only with packaging so they, they are they tracing a packaging that they they're doing it really good they're using a blockchain but we realize that that uh, food industry uh, scheme is blockchain itself because the, the information on packaging is something like a nature blockchain but the problem is that you can't check it if the information on a packaging is right or wrong so we slightly change our strategy how we provide our products uh, we definitely have to um, change a little bit uh, our team so we, we realize that it's totally necessary to have uh, somebody uh, who is b2b negotiator because we are scientists we have no idea how to do that and also somebody who is uh, really good in consumer science because uh, yeah I know something about consumer science, but it's not only mathematics and statistics. So these guys have a feeling for it. So and uh, also we we realize that we need to um, uh, make our portfolio of a product a lot more variable because our really good idea uh, is only one of our products, and we call it Ultimate now because it's so complex that it's quite impossible to to sell it so uh, we created uh, more products so the basic one is really easy to implement uh, is uh, 
implement, implementation costs are really, really low. There's quite no cost. And uh, we can trace the, the product to the farm level, which is, which is fair enough. And uh, data collection is, is really easy. No IoT, no blockchain. And it seems to be the way how we should do that, because it's a lot more, um, a lot more close to the business. So uh, we also uh, know now, so what is our uh, place on market? We know that market is really huge, and um, we can access it uh, quite, uh, quite uh, easily with a proper product. So and uh, it, is, it is our mission. It, it is a one year of uh, our work. Uh, there was a corona crisis, so it was a lot more complicated uh, than in maybe in, 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 a, in another year, but uh, we change a lot and now we can see our future a lot more uh, crystal clear. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Radoslav. <laughs> Thank you again. Can I have a few questions for you? Of course. Uh, first of all, you reminded me of a funny thing that I have just seen for the first time in this new age of conferences that we are all experiencing because, well, I sometimes audit conferences for clients pointing their attention to things that can go wrong. And sometimes those things that can go wrong come from the least expected places, as you very well know. For instance, the thing that people very rarely predict is that they their wonderful conference is ready they have spent millions to to you know to custom design the interior of a conference center lots and lots of marketing gadgetry and all of a sudden the clicker is not working and it kills the overall first impression of the conference have you ever experienced that at a conference have you seen it yes um i realize it by myself and i realize also that uh, the presenter uh, wasn't working at all, so black screen. If you can imagine, you got just five minutes to have your pitch, and you have a black screen. And then, yeah. when it actually starts working, the chemistry is no longer there, and it's very difficult for the speaker exactly. to yeah. to have the the right vibe towards yeah. the audience, right? But it's speaking like, of that. Yeah. That's life, I suppose. Yes, it is. Mm, Radoslav, speaking of those emotions, do you remember how it felt last year as you were waiting for those few last seconds of countdown when your presentation was coming up? So, so firstly, it was really crucial because it was a lot more harder than this year because we, we, we drive our presentation online and you get strictly five minutes. And the tempo of your presentation is a crucial because now you can cut your cut your movie and ma make it fixed to the, to the five minutes. But it was really, really brutal model, five minute presentation. So uh, I, uh, I was really tired, uh, let's say, because uh, the emotions were really high and I was tired after all. But it was uh, really nice that, that we, we got so many points that uh, our company seems to be uh, a progressive or, or uh, innovative. So I was really lucky. Radoslav, tell me, what pushed you to start your own business in the first place? Was it your original idea straight from university or was it something that somehow happened just like the Isaac Newton falling, apple falling from the tree moment? So uh, there are many points. So, so uh, I come from uh, um, business family. So, so my parents are, are businessmen, and also all these, uh, for instance, uh, uh, donation scheme uh, force you to start your own business, or or maybe cooperate with uh, with the businesses. So for, for me, it's a lot more easier to start my own business than cooperate with businessmen because uh, I'm not really good uh, in, in making uh, deals with businessmen. So they are so focused on money and I, I want to be focused in balance between money and a product. And the idea itself. How did you use the prize now that you've mentioned money? So we went to Lisbon, 
and uh, we was a part of this uh, startup. It, it was uh, in Bratislava, and we need to travel between Bratislava and Zilina, it's 200 kilometers. So we spent a lot of money um, for this, and I guess uh, we paid for our uh, uh, our uh, application because <laughs> we got some some uh, rests. So and uh, non non paid uh, non paid uh, invoices. So we have to pay for it. Uh, thinking about the next couple of years, what would you say will be your key milestones to reach and cover? I, I I don't think so. It's it's only up to me because it's about the environment. So uh, now in Corona crisis, every one state want to be sustainable somehow. Uh, they, they want to push our money into local producers, and uh, our business is is uh, focused to to separate cheaters from non cheaters. So so we are we are able according to genetic level. Mm, absolutely declare that this animal was produced in Slovak, Poland, Czech, Austria. So we, we are able to, to uh, give, give to consumer, to, I don't know how to explain it in English, so it's quite complicated, but, but so if consumer is sure and believe that the product is, is always better when he is not. Interesting perspective. Radoslav, mm, towards my last questions, I'd like to focus on those young people who are still at the dream stage and are trying to push it towards realization. And you mentioned a lot about the incubation programs and the options you had. How do you think, because I, I believe last year may have been really crucial for you uh, with all those support options that you have used. Are you a different businessman now, an entrepreneur, a visionary? Are you, do you feel something significant, fundamental has changed about the way you go about business? Your why, in other words? Um, definitely, yes. Uh, year, year ago, I was quite sure that I can do quite everything by myself. And now I'm sure that I can't. That's a big because, change, uh, definitely. Yeah, that definitely changed because uh, I'm not able to do uh, so good business strategy as, as some some of my my colleagues. So it's impossible. I can do good strategy, but not good enough strategy for for B two B negotiation or for. And the one thing. Uh, and the one thing that you also mentioned uh, was that understanding your weak points is really crucial and you emphasize presentation skills as vital to the extent that you thought it's actually worth subcontracting the presentation of your model of your idea your brainchild to someone who is a professional in that that's not very common is it that people do that um, it's definitely not very common in slovak um, but uh, as i hear it's quite common um, approach Mm -hmm. So I, I never heard about this. Uh, I, I heard about it only on this startup, uh, and uh, they told me that yeah, yeah, you speak something like a uh, Slovakish or English or something uh, really similar to English, but it's not good enough. So and I told them so. so I, I'm really quite old guy. So so what, what should I do? And they told me yeah, you can buy a picture, and it will be a professional, and everything drive fantastic. Well, that, that was and really let's, interesting. let's try and finish on that note. And could I ask you to give us a one single sentence motivational soundbite for young entre entrepreneurs? Go and believe into your dreams. Always. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Radoslav Zidek joining us today. Thank you once again for your presentation and answering right. my questions also. Yeah. Best of luck, Radoslav. Bye.
Ladies and gentlemen, the time for the audience vote is practically over, but we, we decided to give you one extra minute if you haven't voted yet. So here's the QR code, here's the website address. Please remember, EIT Food is there to support you as an entrepreneur, regardless of what stage of business development your idea is currently at. If you have an idea or looking for a Series B investment, EIT Food has support programs available to help you. These can be found at eitfood.eu slash entrepreneurship. Coming back to the innovators competition, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you that the first place winners from each of the 17 countries local finals will be invited to the grand final in autumn, during which global fame and 25 thousand euros are at stake not to mention learning from top class entrepreneurs and having access to great training programs if you'd like to watch other country finals feel free to join us all dates and details can be found at www.eitfood.eu slash events it's time for us to close the audience voting we hope you used your chance to vote for your favorite startup while we prepare to announce the audience prize uh, and while the jury is deciding on the three main prizes, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to share with you a short highlights video from the previous editions of the Innovation Prizes competition. Enjoy. The scale of the problems that we're facing in our food system are huge. So EIT Food has come about to change this. Events like these show the incredible creativity that people have in the space of the food industry. The startups play a fundamental role. They take the risk of bringing these new innovations to the market. Okay, 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 let's do it! We designed this competition to find new disruptive ideas. This is the one of the best call for startup in the food category. We have only here plenty of people that really want to change the world. There's a lot of actors working together to find solutions for our project, our startup. I never seen this beautiness in project for food tech like this one. You learn from them, you also get some training so that you develop business plans. This competition is inspiring, but it's also challenging. <laughs> EIT Food is experience, inspiration, challenging, energizing and fun. The future of the food ecosystem is about connection and evolution. The best three things of this competition are youth, networking and enthusiasm. Atmosphere, mentors and price. Quality of advisors, quality of the education and quality of the food. You will connect to other people with other entrepreneurs and you will learn what's happening in the food ecosystem. There are so many solutions waiting to be implemented that can actually make a big impact on how we see the food in the future. We want to listen to young people to see which are the best business opportunity for innovation in the food market. To help Europe build a food system that's better for people's health, better for the environment, and also more trusted and traceable. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have the results now. Without further ado, the winner of the audience award during the Slovakian final is... Lokalny Terch. 2,000 euros, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations! <laughs> Please try and unmute because we can't hear you. Hopefully we can have a quick chat. Lokalny Terch, the winner of our audience award, ladies and gentlemen. So if we can't hear you, we will have to do with a big smile of joy at winning the audience competition. Can we have at least that? Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> but no sound.
Well, we need to stay with that. Once again, sincere congratulations to our team from Lokal Neter, Audience Award winner in the Slovakian final. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now proceed to the main three awards. Uh, the third award goes to Pilo. It's 1,000 euros. Ladies and gentlemen, let's proceed to the second place in the Slovakian country final. And the second place goes to Wizzy. 3,000 euros. And now we've got all the suspense we need, so no further delays. It's Echo Dish. 5,000 euros, ladies and gentlemen. I'm <laughs> <on>. <laughs> well, that's the kind of joy I wanted to see today. Congratulations, gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, here is what we call an Oscars moment, your red card. <laughs> exactly. Where you can thank everyone and dream big. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. We are very happy now. There are, yeah, I, I just lost my words <laughs> just now. So thank It's thank always you. safe to start with thank you to some specific yes. individuals from your team, family members, pets, everyone you can think of. Sure, sure. We are really grateful to have a great people around us that, that supported us and that uh, gave us this opportunity to participate in this competition and, and uh, EIT Food, uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, Set up because uh, because now we, we will go to the Europe final where we where we can learn from the actually from the best and it's a great opportunity for us and we are so grateful for the people that enabled all of this happen so so big thanks to to, to all of you gentlemen remember <laughs> this moment very very well because you never know one year from now someone might be asking you how your world has changed over the past 365 days and despite the challenges of the 2020 coronavirus year let's hope it will be a magnificent year for you and good luck in the european finals as well thank you very much thank, thank you. you once again congratulations So we already know, ladies and gentlemen, it's Iko Dish, our first prize winner in the Slovakian country final. The first prize winner will participate in the grand final and will have a chance to compete with other first prize country final winners for up to 25,000 euros. What a, what a day, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's high time for us to thank everyone who participated everyone who helped make it happen and be a successful country final in Slovakia, especially the jury members, the, the hub coordinators, our keynote speaker, our wonderful audience. Thank you to everyone involved. Our next country final, ladies and gentlemen, or country finals rather, will be taking place as follows. 13th of July, hopefully it will be a lucky day for Latvian competitors. 14th of July, Czechia. Uh, and 13th of July, again, Hungary. That's all for today, essentially. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for staying with us. Once again, congratulations to all the winners and all the participants in the country final. Best of luck, stay safe.